everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a recipe to share with you today. We are using this book called Plain Delight. It's medieval cooking for modern cooks. We're going to be using this cookbook as inspiration to put together a medieval feast for our Middle Ages unit study. We're going to be doing this recipe for stewed beef, but first we're going to make our trenchers. And I am going to be using some pancake mix in order to make this and I'm gonna explain why in a minute. But first I'm going to add three cups of water as as well as yeast to a large bowl because we're going to be making our bread so to speak for our trenchers and that's how we're going to be serving our stew which was traditional during the Middle Ages all right so I need a one more cup of water there so a total of three cups a quarter teaspoon of salt I added one packet of yeast I'm going to use this multi-grain pancake mix because it has some unique flours that I don't normally use and I didn't want to go out and buy a bunch of specialty flours and so I'm using this now this is totally not authentic I think you could just use regular flour and it would be fine but I want to use some of the other grains that I don't typically use but overall this would not be something that you would find during the Middle Ages so I'm going to set this aside and let it rise for a couple hours and in the meantime I'm going to take one finely chopped red onion I'm going to saute it in oil I'm just using some grapeseed oil but I think any oil would be fine to that I'm going to add one and a half pounds of beef stew you could add more or less if you wanted to this didn't actually make all that much but it was a really delicious treat anyway now it's time for us to prepare the sauce that we're going to be using for our beef stew we're going to start out with a little bit of saffron. Now this is hard to find if you're not used to using it. And I've got some saffron that needs to be ground first, but you could use a little bit of turmeric if you wanted to instead. So I'm going to add that to a dish as well as two tablespoons of parsley. I think fresh parsley would have been better, but all I had was dried parsley. You're also going to add a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and the recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon of allspice but i actually put a half teaspoon and i think it could probably do with a little bit more we're going to add a half teaspoon of cinnamon which you could omit if you're not used to adding cinnamon to your beef and then two tablespoons of red wine vinegar i'm going to omit the alcohol for this recipe but it does call for some wine so I'm just going to mix this and set this aside. You want to brown your beef for about a half an hour. I'm also adding some salt, which I don't recall if the recipe called for or not, but I went ahead and I added some anyway. So in the meantime, we're going to work on our trenchers. So the dough has risen. It looks great. And I am going to make this super simple. I'm not even going to make a loaf of bread. We're just going to make these round balls of bread and I'm also adding a little bit of grapeseed oil to my parchment paper but that's optional you don't need to do that at all and I'm also going to get some on my hands so it's a little bit easier to scoop up that dough it's a really wet dough and I think I probably could have added a little bit more flour to that it was a total of almost eight cups of that pancake mix to three cups of water you can make a drier dough if you wish but this turned out just fine in the end and it was really tasty so I'm just going to get three big dollops onto my parchment paper. You could do these smaller or larger if you'd like. There was leftover uh, bread in the end, but that was appropriate for the whole theme of this Middle Ages feast because the leftover trenchers were donated to the uh, poor people or to the servants. So while the bread is baking, I'm going to go ahead and cut these carrots up. I have one pound of carrots. I'm trying to make these into some large kind of cubes. I'm going to set that aside. I'm also going to get one cup of raisins. You could omit this if you'd like. My children didn't care for the raisins with the beef, but I didn't have currants and that's what the recipe called for. So I used raisins instead. So we're going to add the carrots and the raisins when the meat is nearly done. You only want them cooking for about 30 minutes, otherwise they'll get too soft. So the beef is looking really good at this point, but it was taking longer to cook than I expected. So I'm going to add a little bit of water and raise the temperature just a little bit. But I stepped away while this was happening and I overcooked it in the end. So pay attention when it's nearly done. So the bread is done and I'm going to go ahead and take the top off of the bread so that we can make our trenchers and that is where the stew is going to go in. It smells amazing. They were really delicious and slightly sweet as well. So it was a nice balance with the savory sweet stew as well as the bread. We're also going to serve these on our little wood platters. Uh, that's a cutting board and just like another serving tray. And again, to keep with trying to make it as authentic as possible. 
So now it's time to scoop in our stew into our trenchers, and this is how feasts would be served. Uh, they would be served into either a bowl or into a bread trencher. There weren't plates, and um, there wasn't even forks at the time. So my children are going to eat this with their hands and the bread, the lid of the bread, and then later they're going to use forks because, you know... This is just for inspiration. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when it's done. My children were so excited about this. They especially love when we head to the kitchen for our unit studies, for any lesson that can happen in the kitchen, my children really love. Um, so if you haven't tried any kind of cooking along with your homeschool or just with any of your lessons, I highly encourage it. It's really memorable. The children really love it. And the best part was that they were showering me with so many compliments. This was really a hit. So we'll definitely be doing this again, but we'll probably leave out the raisins the next time we do it. If you'd like to check out some of the other videos that I have in our Middle Ages unit, you can tap on the screen right now. If you're interested in seeing some of our other cooking tutorials, you can see that as well. You can find the complete recipe down in the description box below. And if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.